This is the Mad Dragon Podcast. G'day and welcome to the Mad Dragons podcast for this team list Tuesday edition as the Dragons hit the road in search of consistency. They take on the Gold Coast Titans for round six and Chloe, our record on the road of late hasn't been great. So what is it that we need to do differently to get the win on Sunday? Hello, everyone. Good evening. So, <laughs> your question. I believe that they need to play 80 minutes. They need to, um, watching a few of the back from, like, the Broncos and everything, I think don't give up the um, the urgency, the speed. I think play the ball freely. Um, and just being able um, to understand that if things don't go our way, it's okay. We're, let's The next play will be better. So, I think the defence as well and the tackle make. So I'm hoping that they can play the full 80 minutes. Don't give up by 70 minutes. So, yes, that's my take on why we need to keep going. Don't give up, boys, okay, and talk. Talk to each other. It was great to see you at Wynn Stadium talking to one another. I heard you all using your big words and talking. Communicate on that field, okay? Yeah, certainly uh, I, I, you, you talk about the, the, the Dragons not giving up. But the, uh, we, we've seen a, a few results over the, the course of the last weekend of, of teams that uh, looked like they were gone. Uh, Muzz sent me a, a, a message during the, uh, the Sharks game saying that uh, all we needed was one more, one more game to go our way and we're both going to get eight from eight. Uh, bloody Muzz went the early crow. And uh, the Sharks ended up getting rolled and spoiled a perfect weekend for myself. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, yeah, like you said, Chloe, they've just, they've just got to keep going and uh, and not giving up. Uh, but it has, hasn't been great. We have lost our last six games outside of New South Wales since beating the Warriors on the Sunshine Coast in round one last year. We've also lost five of our last seven on the Gold Coast. Uh, not all of them against the Gold Coast, but on the Gold Coast, we've lost five of our last seven. So let us know, Hasman, how does the team look that's going to break this streak of losses? Yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, so uh, pretty much the same lineup as last week at this stage. Um, so Tyrell signed at fullback. Uh, Fina and Revelara on the wings. Uh, Sully and Lomax in the centres. Uh, Junior Ramon uh, retains his position at six. Uh, alongside uh, Ben Hunt, um, Frankie Molo and Blake Laurie, the absolute try scoring machine uh, in the front row. Jacob Little uh, will be lining up at uh, at nine. Um, Murdoch Masilla and Jane Sur in the second row with Jack Bird locking down the scrum. And then on the bench, we've got Moses Embai, who probably had his best game uh, for us uh, last week uh, that we've ever seen him. Um, Jack DeBellin, Toby Couchman and... Uh, Josh Kerr. Uh, now, it's interesting to note that uh, we've got our old friend uh, Peter Goff uh, this week, um, who presided under that absolute shellacking we copped at the hands of the Broncos. Um, but we do have an 11 to 5 win loss record um, under Peter Goff. Uh, so 68.75% uh, win record. So it's not bad. Um, and we've actually got uh, Mrs. Badger in the, uh, in the bunker as well. Uh, not sure how we go under her, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's how we line it up this week, Donnie. I'm not sure how we go under her either, mate. That's uh, an interesting choice of words, but um, we, <laughs> we move on. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about our team uh, in, in a few minutes, but uh, right now it's time to get into talking about the opposition. So uh, to do that, we go into this segment. Come with me as we go. Behind enemy lines.
G'day, Matt Dragons. I'm Big T, and this is Beyond Enemy Lines. Before I welcome in our guest tonight, um, I'll go through the, the Titans team. We have um, first this little boy at the back, Cam Pereira and Philip Samuel, Sammy on the wings, Brian Kelly and Aaron Shoop Shoop Diddy Wop on in the centres, uh, Toby, Toby Sexton and Tanner Boyd, um, six and seven, Big Mo, Chris Randall, and Tino Fasumalaawi. In the front row, for Fafita Stimson and Isaac Lou box the scrum. On the bench, we've got Aaron Clark, Joe Vuna. I was going to say Tino's little brother, but um, I like saying Fasul Malaawi. So uh, <laughs> Isaac Fasul Malaawi, Tino's little brother. I said it anyway, but anyway. And Payne Haas's little brother. Um, Sam Mack is the 18th man. All right. Um, a special guest today. We've had him before. We've had him before. Blaze from BKR Sport. How are you, man? I'm going all right, man. Refresh from a nice little buy. Got an easy two points. You know, you can't complain with an easy two points. So, you know, we've got a lot of injuries right now, as, uh, you know, we'll obviously talk about. So that was a really prime, perfect two-point uh, buy as well because it honestly couldn't have come at a better time for us, yeah. That's right. Good man, good man. Um, the last time we met was in round two and it didn't bode well for you guys. 16-12 um, at half time. Um, second half didn't go your way. Uh, ended up being... 32-18. What went wrong for you boys in that day? So, obviously, we got off to a great, good start, and that was fantastic. Uh, I think we led 12-2. to two. You guys scored the first two points, but then uh, we scored a couple of quick tries. I think the biggest thing for us is that that was the start of the Sammy Verrills injury. So, Sam Verrills went down. I think it was a, a collarbone, maybe. I can't remember what his injury is right now, uh, which we are still... He's still out for another six or so weeks or so because of that. Um, when he went down, that's where Tyrell Sloan found that first try, found his gap, and then just the momentum from there, unfortunately... We fell apart. We lost Joe Joe Fafita. And, you know, we've been a team in the last couple of years, actually just for, actually I'd just say specifically the last couple of years where if the momentum goes against us, we find it impossible to regather that momentum and, and make it an even playing field and then push from there. And that's why, you know, having Kieran Foran is so, it's so good for us and Sam Verrills in those experienced players. And unfortunately we lost one of those guys. They found that gap and you guys just didn't look back from there. So yeah, it was unfortunate, but overall um, Dragons did everything right on the day and, and deserved the win. Yeah, once we lose momentum as well, we get into a bit of the same sort of thing. Mm. Um, Foran, Foran and Brimson, um, big losses for you guys. But you've got Sexton and Jaden Campbell coming in. Yeah, Are those two players going to change the way the Titans play? Okay, so in regards to Foran and Brimson, this is actually something that happened with us last week. So the Cowboys game that we had was exactly the same as the one we had with you guys down there at Cogra, is that when... We were up 12-0, uh, no, 8-0, sorry, against the Cowboys. And we were actually dominating them up there in Townsville for the first 30 minutes. And then AJ Brimson and Kieran Foran both went down at the same time, which forced us to put Aaron Clark into the seven. Obviously, he's not a seven. And just our entire team then just got rolled. And we still actually competed for quite a bit of that game. Um, but they are huge losses there. You know, we we're, as... You know, everyone knows they've got our starting one, our starting five, six, eight, nine, and 11 all out right now. Uh, so obviously Toby Sexton will come into the six, Tanner Boyd into the seven, and Jaden Campbell in that fullback. I'm still confident with that team, but in the same sense, it, it does leave a bit of hesitancy considering that Toby Sexton is mainly a seven. That's where he came in and was playing alongside Ash Taylor in 2021. Uh, then 2022, he had to go uh, and partner AJ Brimson, who's a fullback, but that was because of, unfortunately, the, the uh, things that were happening in the club that they just made the wrong decision and they acknowledged that. Uh, and, and now he's going into the sixth to partner Tanner Boyd. I'd be a lot more confident if Toby was alongside Kieran, but obviously that's not the case. So, Look, it's it's definitely interesting. They did play a bit in the preseason together in the six and the seven. Uh, I really don't know how to read the the, the halves there. Uh, I really I really don't because I'm good mates to both of them and I know they're both great players. But it's just I've never seen these two work together. And Toby usually plays seven as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, before before um, before last week's bye, you guys went down to the Cowboys. Mm. Um, I think you guys were leading at halftime. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight really six. Were. Yeah, yeah. And um, and and the week before, the week before you um beat the storm. Mm. So consistency is a big thing in rugby league. Um, mm. we asked we asked the same question to ourselves every week about the dragons. Mm -hmm. Why are the Titans so up and down? This has been a thing that we've had forever. You know, we've never really had a consistent team. Even the days of Scotty Prince and whatnot, you know, and uh, Preston Campbell, Luke Bailey, we never really were actually genuinely consistent. Like we would we'd win a couple of good, really big games and then lose a game that 
we would ex- expect to win. And we've still just carried that through. And there are a couple of clubs out there, very similar to the Dragons, obviously. Parramatta Eels, they are absolutely the same. You know, the Tiger, well, Tigers are consistently bad, so I'll give them that. But, you know, overall, like we, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know how it doesn't, it doesn't translate uh, to, because I see these guys training every single week. I know exactly how these guys are They're all putting in every bit of effort. We just don't understand how, you can get it so right in some games like that storm game, despite giving up 34 points. Mm. But again, in regards to that Cowboys game, we would have uh, like the general consensus of, from what I've seen online as well, is that the Titans would have gone to win that game quite well. But unfortunately at the point of the 30 minute mark, when AJ Brimson and Kieran four and two spinal members go down immediately already missing Sammy Verrills as well. I don't think any team wins that game. I, I respectfully, I, I don't think any team can win that game from there. We still competed for the majority of it. So yeah, I'm not too sure how to answer for the consistency, but it is a common trend with a lot of teams. Yeah, it was a lot like, like with us over the last few years. Mm. We can beat the big teams and it comes down to the, the lower teams and we get beat by, we get beat by the Canberra's and the, the Tigers. Yeah. and the, It's just crazy. It just, I scratch my head. <laughs> probably you do the same thing I'll, I'll every say. week man don't you worry every single <laughs> week because I'm, I'm at the stadium every single week whether it's home or away so i i have to deal with it live too like there there's just it's yeah it's brutal it's it's brutal yeah, i just want to change tack a little bit here too um the, the lady the girls teams did you do much about them you do uh, so I know a bit about them. Uh, obviously, I think it was last year the year they had two seasons in one, or was that the year beforehand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, we, we, just, we get around them quite a bit. We know uh, Fui Maona has joined us actually from. Yeah, Utah. I was just about to say you guys, you guys have signed um, Shaley Bent and Talia Fui Maona, you know, and Jamie Chapman from um, from Brisbane. She was a she's an ex Dragon, mm. and um, so they're three big pickups for you. Um, yeah. yeah, they're looking good. You guys. That did well last year in the in the ladies comp. So, yeah, we we had a, a really good season. I think I think at one point one of the seasons last year we we weren't the greatest, but the year before that I think we made the semi final and then might have lost to the Dragons or was it? Or no, you guys beat the Roosters in the semis and we might have lost to somebody else. No, yeah. we lost oh. to the Dragons and the and the Roosters beat yeah. the Broncos. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, we Just- we yeah. Jesse's yeah, I remember that semi final. Um, I was at that game. Mm. Steph Hancock got a hat trick, I think. That yeah, day. that was on the Sunshine Coast, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, look, I think that the women's team, I, I love the progress we're making. And I guess it's a little bit of a different topic, but the way that yeah, Steve Shelly Benz is Puma. I oh, know, big signings for you. They are big signings for you. Yeah, well, Shaley Benz, obviously, you know, she's the partner of David and Vader, so it works out really well yeah, they're both right, on yeah. the Gold Coast, exactly. you know. We were yeah. hoping we were going to get David from Vader, well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it wish you, it wish you, it wish you get Dave from That's us. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody else got questions for Blaze? Anybody, anybody, Titans game? Go on once. <laughs> no, I might, I might just, just throw one, one at you, your Blaze. I mean, I sort of look at the, the Dragons team and I look at our, our depth. And if we lost a one, six, seven, and nine, uh, uh, we wouldn't know the guys that were coming in to replace them. Whereas <laughs> I, I, I sort of look at the guys that are that are coming in as replacement for your your, your injured players, and, and they're still recognisable names. You must be pretty happy with the way the the Titans have built depth in their squad over the last couple of years. Absolutely, man. This is actually what I was kind of about. I was going to say as well with Steve Mitchell as our as CEO, who came from the Cowboys' success of 2015. Uh, he has done a, a gigantic effort of actually rejuvenating the club on a um, on a community level, right? So, and this will come back down to this: is that we've locked up the places like Mars and Kibra and PBC, three massive schools in the rugby league uh, of the country and the world. They're just massive. And then you've got the women's game that we've obviously got. We've got the PDRL. We've also got a women's netball team now in the Gold Coast. And we're trying to create a um, New South Wales Cup team as well for, uh, with the Gold Coast Times at the moment. So it's just, you can see that through that, we're seeing the benefits of these players that they do, as you say, have a recognisable name. And there's other players there as well that I believe should deserve a crack in the likes of Keanu Kinney, who had a killer preseason. Um, he was absolutely awesome. He could have gotten a crack in the fullback. You know, we could have put Jaden Campbell onto the six and we would have been happy. Uh, you know, Tommy Weaver is just right now, is just, you know, gnawing at the bit. He really deserves a crack, but he can't find a way in. We've got Toby Sexton there who's had some good points. And, you know, we now we've signed Cruz Leeming as well from the uh, Super League that can back up for number nine. And we've got, we've just got depth there. Yeah, we've got depth and I'm, I'm pretty happy that everyone who is is getting a crack 
is deserving of a crack because not all clubs have that. Sometimes you have players who just get given the go because one, they're the player's son or two, they're, oh. you know, uh, um, you know, or they're just, there's no one else there. And for me, we have a plethora of, of depth at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are looking good. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so I suppose overall, with, with that in mind, mate, uh, how much are the Titans going to get beaten by? <laughs> Well, I, uh, you know, the, obviously the bookies have you guys as the underdogs and we have six of our starting 13 out, so that should tell you enough about what people are thinking about the game. But I, I think it'll be close for sure. I do. Uh, it's at Seabus Super Stadium, though. Obviously, we did win there last time out. You were saying that you guys have a pretty poor record away from home. Uh, I guess in history, we don't have a great record at home, but I, I know this is a different team now and I know this team is, is, is a much better team than we have been in history. So I've got full faith in the team, uh, 100%. I, I believe we probably win by about... I'll go six to ten points. Cool. Mm. Uh, I think Chloe, Chloe's, Chloe's got a question, yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes, um, I see that you have the drum. Um, how did mm. that come about? Because it looks really cool. And I like we have a dragon's army that is very like poor, but how did that come about? I really think it's uh, it's really interesting when I see it. So how did that come about? Yeah, so I've been a part of the Titans Frontline, the official supporters club of the Gold Coast Titans for 13 years now, since 2010. I was a young, blonde, streaky-haired kid at the time who was a bit of a shy one, but came into it and just kind of found myself through the club and found myself through this community. And we had a drummer at the time who was um, he had been around since 2007, and then I got a little drum alongside him because I wanted to feel amongst it as well. I wanted to feel like I was a part of it. And I got a small drum. He had the big drum. Unfortunately, he did leave uh, at, at some point, I think 2011. And then I just eff effectively took over the big drum. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a crazy man. If you see my vlogs, you, you see me getting getting loud, pretty crazy. And uh, I do my best to create the best atmosphere that we can at the, at the club because obviously – we as a team have not really got a great reputation for having a great deal of fans. So the best that I can do is, is put myself out there to create as much of an atmosphere as possible. So that's why we've got the drum there and we get the chance going. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Is it hard now that the dolphins have joined with being more like the fans side, because now there's like the Broncos, dolphins, Cowboys and Titans. Do you feel that now with the dolphins joining the fans and the atmosphere? Is it at the moment? Um, I think the NRL product is incredible right now. So I think the atmosphere is, is, is really good in general because of how good the games are. But I would say that with Redcliffe joining, they took fans from the Broncos. But in the same sense, Redcliffe fans are Broncos fans because they were a feeder club for them for like 40 years. So it's like they, they're basically the same club. We call them the wish version of the Gold Coast there at Redcliffe. So, you know, yeah, look, overall, it's, um, it's, it's great for the game. But I'd say that if they were to impact in regards to atmosphere, it definitely would be more so up on the northern side there around the Brisbane area. But, you know, we've got them in three weeks and uh, I hope we put a score past them just like you guys did. <coughs> Thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you oh, for your okay. time. Oh, great questions. Hello, great, great, great questions. questions. <laughs> All right, anybody else, guys? Yes, no? We'll probably wrap uh, it Jesse's up. Jesse's got his hand up, I think, mate. All right. Okay, Thank so you. my question is, yeah, okay. My question is um, regarding the future of um, your coach, Justin Melbrook. Obviously, um, there's been our coach, Griff Griffin, as well as um, Newcastle's Adam O'Brien and Justin Holbrook, who's actually a Dragons local. Um, Hat. What do you see of him as a future coach? Do you see him as your house? How do you think his job is? Do you think he's a – is he doing a good job, do you think, at the Titans? I mean, he took you to the semis a couple of years ago. Obviously, you haven't had a good season since, but is is Justin Holbrook the Titans coach going forward? Oh, well, I think that right now there is actually quite a few coaches on the market if, if the team was obviously struggling. Obviously, the likes of, uh, and I will get back to Justin, the likes of Desi Hasler there, you know, the Shane Flanagan and whatnot in the market, Michael Maguire as well. But I think that for the Titans, Justin does really suit this club. I think that he really, I think he played for Newcastle. You said he's from the, the, um, the Dragons area, but he just seems like a Gold Coast local. Like I know Justin, he's a great bloke and everything he does, it's, it's, it's been a tough transition from the Super League, obviously, when he was taking over St. Helens, where they're obviously very focused on very different aspects of rugby league rather than the NRL, which is just, it's, it's completely and utterly different quality wise and just in the aspects of play. So for me, I back Justin in hundred percent. I think that, when he took over the club, we won a spoon 2019. He then took over early 2020. We then were a, 
a game short of making the finals. And that was in a shortened season. We had five games less than what we would have had. And we won our last five games in a row. So we more than likely would have beaten the Sharks to that position. 2021, we did make it. And then obviously last year, we unfortunately, as a club, and that goes down to literally everybody, uh, not just Justin, um, as a club, the there was some wrong choices made, but they've been rectified this year. We sign players of need rather than want, unlike the Tigers who sign players of want rather than need. And uh, I, I, yeah, I think that Justin is the right man for the job. And I think that he is, is very safe right now. I don't think that anyone around the club is thinking negative of him yet. All righty then. Um, Blaze, you've been an absolute champion once again. I appreciate um, that. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, you've asked, answered the questions. We've, We've ribbed you a little bit. You've taken it. Um, <laughs> like that, that one about the girls' team where they got beat, I like, asked you about the girls because we beat you last year in the semi-final. So, mm. um, but, oh, was um, that was that you trying to get one over me? I thought, oh, just, just, a bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. I oh, was anyway, born just just Eagle. quickly. I was born in Cogra, by the way. Just quickly, oh, I was I was born in Cogra. Yes, I don't mind the dragons. A, you used to be a dragons fan, right? Uh, no, my mum's from the Sharks. She's a Sharks fan, so I didn't oh, mind the Sharkies. No. Yeah, 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 that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we go, I'm just about the Titans are win loss, win loss by. Um, so that means the buy is normally a win, so that means a loss in your next game. So win loss, win loss, win loss against the Titans, against the Dragons. Yeah, I'm not sure that's how it works. Not not oh, sure how that one works. That's how, yeah. that's how yeah. I think it works. That's oh, how okay. I think it works. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right, man. You've been absolutely fantastic. Loved having you on. Um, if we get in the semi-finals together, we might do it again, again, again this year. If we um, make the semi-finals like, together, that would be the most. That would be the most insane semi-final ever. I don't sure, know will, how. Mate. Sure will. <laughs> and if it's up on the Gold Coast, I'm going to be there. Good. Um, All right, man. We'll welcome you in. I might. Like, sweet. No worries. Thank you very much, Blaze. You've been. Do easy, guys. Have a good one, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Good luck this year, mate. Yeah, you guys too. See but ya. Not in, not in the next week. Not in this week's game. All right. We're gonna win by forty. Thanks for coming, guys. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. Man, all right. Parting <laughs> shot. Parting. I was that? actually gonna leave right then too as my last thing, but I was like, no, that's me. That's me. All right, mic guys. Drop. Have a good one. Eh? Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> all right, mate. See you, Rod. Yeah. Oh, what a great bloke. Yeah. Always, always a pleasure, as you said. All right. Time to get into this now. Straight from one segment to the next. Take it away, Jesse. Your segment, mate. Go. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, so, us playing the Titans this week. So, um, so my question tonight is, what year did the Dragons first play a game at Seabus Super Stadium? Um, can you name if they won? And uh, also tell me what the score was. Uh, once I, the answer is revealed, I'll release who played what the team was that night so yeah right. comment away so just to clarify the question what what year did we first play at Seabus stadium and what was the score that's 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 the question correct yes right oh we'll, uh, we'll check the comments as that as they come through and uh, seems like a bit of a tougher one i don't know whether too many people are going to know what know that one off the top of their head uh, so you, you've you've challenged the fans. I think uh, maybe they've got your questions a little bit too easily the last couple of weeks, Jesse, and uh, you're you're really trying to dig deep to try and challenge them and see uh, how much the Dragons fans really know. Uh, we'll see if anything uh, comes through. Um, in the meantime, we might move on to to starting to discuss the the Dragons team, and uh, we'll see if any of those any question any answers come through. Uh, to that question, what year did the Dragons first play at Seabus Stadium? Uh, if you know that one, first of all, that would be a good starting point. Um, so start sending through your guesses. Um, 
All right, so with regards to our team, uh, the most obvious thing to raise uh, discussion this week is the selection of Jaden Sewer in the starting lineup. Uh, Chloe, after a calf injury, kept him to just 24 minutes last week. Were you surprised to see him named for this game? And do you expect him to play? Well, first, if he's injured, then he shouldn't be playing. If he couldn't play for 80 minutes and it was only 24 minutes, he shouldn't be played. He shouldn't be named. And that's a bit shocking for what's Hook doing. Like if a, if a person is injured, do not name him. There's other players. However, um, I was looking, I've been doing very good Googling today, guys, because I wanted to do the right information. He doesn't play. Now, I need a bit of help with you guys. Can Jack DeBellin go into his place, even though he's like a prop? Is he is he able to play? Is he is he allowed? No, well, he's allowed. He's allowed. Yeah. I just I, I don't think he would play second row. But uh... yeah, I wasn't sure. Like Couchman and Kerr, they're all not the right position. Like because I was looking at it. Well, and I'm Ka- like... Couch- Couchman actually is an edge forward, oh. so he he okay he considers himself a second rower. Uh, okay, I think uh, he, he's a bloke that can play anywhere in the forward pack, really. Okay, because I was looking at, like, the positions, and I'm like, well, I don't think it matches, but then maybe Couchman could go in instead of him. But if he's injured, don't name him. That's what I think. Or monitor him until the last minute or something. That's really frustrating for me. When someone's injured, don't waste the time to name that person until at least 10 minutes or, you know. So I think it was a waste of time to even name him. Yeah, I I think uh, something similar happened last week with – with Jack DeBellum. DeBellum was was named in the, the extended squad, was given uh, until the captain's run proved he was fit and uh, and then came on onto the bench and came into the team. I think the same thing ha- is happening here, just the other way around with Jaden Sewer. Uh, he'll be given up until the, the captain's run to prove his fitness. Uh, if it's only a minor calf strain, then then I guess he he, he could could play. Uh, but again, do, 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 you, do you want to risk him? Uh, doing you know a, a further tear or a bigger tear uh, that's going to keep him out for longer. Uh, maybe give him give him a week. But um, again, it, it's always difficult to to know uh, when. Um, yeah, it's always difficult to know when when we don't uh, have all of the information. We don't know exactly how serious the injury is. Uh, we've got one guess uh, that has come through to answer the, the quiz question, Jesse. Uh, Ian Johnson says. Uh, was it 2007 and the Dragons won 20 points to 18? That's incorrect. That that game was at Suncorp Stadium. Um, um, yeah, that game was not at, on the Gold Coast. It was that was, game was at Suncorp Stadium, the Titans' very first game. So that is incorrect. Okay. Well, Lisa Marie Cooper says 2008. She hasn't got a, a guess at the score, but uh, she's guessed 2008. That year is correct. Yes, um, I, I, um, I will reveal the score. Um, yeah. Well, do you want do you want to reveal the score, or now that we've got the that it was the two thousand and eight game, do you want to do you want to see if anybody else knows the score out there? So the two thousand and eight win over the Titans. Well, I've reve- revealed the result. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, anybody anybody might know the score of uh, the. The, the t- first time we played against the Titans in 2008 at Seabus. Um, so we'll, we'll leave, leave that one open. And, uh, and well, Lisa Marie Cooper's uh, come back and said she does not know what the score was. So uh, she's guessed that the right year, but um, can't quite remember uh, the, the, the score line in that, in that game. But um, we'll see if anybody else does. And uh, then we'll move on to the other team selection that is generating plenty of angst from Dragons fans is the selection of Junior Amone and Moses and Bai at the expense of Bad Bud Sullivan. Uh, Hasman, do you think Hook has made the right call here? Uh, I think so. Um, you have to. You actually have to wonder if he's if he's actually uh, recovered from his uh, shoulder injury a hundred percent. Now, he's, he's a player that we can't really afford to lose uh, sort of long term. Um, and there's always the risk that if he if he does come back too early, uh, you know there may be some further damage there. So uh, maybe on maybe he's uh, erring on the side of caution, Hook uh, not selecting him this week. Um, probably similar to uh, what Chloe was saying, they should be doing with uh, with Jade Zua. Yeah, I was, I've um, 
there might be a couple of members of the panel that might question whether there is a shoulder injury at all. Uh, some people might have had conversations with uh, the person in question uh, and uh, he's may, maybe revealed that there is, there is no shoulder injury at all. So uh, there's there's some speculation that that is completely fabricated. There is no injury and I, I don't know why, but he has been named as halfback in the, in the reserve grade side. So uh, he's going to be playing. He's just not playing NRL. All right. Well, we've got a, a couple of other. <laughs> There's a lot of people guessing the uh, 2007 20 to 18 game. That wasn't at Seabus Super Stadium. That was at Suncorp, as Jesse's already said. So, uh, Tolly, that's uh, not the correct game. It's the 2008 game was the first game at uh, at Seabus. Uh, so it it wasn't the uh, 20 to 18 win in round one 2007. Uh, that one wasn't at, at Seabus. It was the Titans' uh, first game, but. Um, yeah, we're not talking about that one. So, uh, Jesse, I think uh, we might put them out of their misery and let them know the score and, and run through the team sheet from that one. So, our panellist, Hasman, has got it correct. The Dragons did win that game, 26-22. It was a seesawing game um, 15 years ago in 2008. Um, it was actually during the Orange period. So, I'll run through the team that played that night. So, at fullback, we had Brett Morris on the way we had Jason Nightingale and Michael Lett. The centers, we had Josh Morris and Chase Stanley. 5'8", we had the current NRLW coach now. We front rowers with Justin Paul and Jason Riles. At hooker, Dean Young. Back rowers were Bo Scott and Jared Safi. The lock was Stuart Webb. On the bench was Dan Hunt, Lungi Setu, Rangi Chase, and Kirk Reynoldson, coached by Nathan Brown. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting side. I, I think there's probably a, a few names that uh, might prick the ears up of Dragons fans, names they, they perhaps haven't heard, heard in quite some some while. Uh, Stuart Webb locking the scrum is, is certainly certainly one that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't remember too much about, about Stuart Webb in the, in, in the red and white. But, um, yeah, Lungy said to Rungy Chase, Kirk Reynoldson on the bench there. Uh, a, a, a few blokes that... Um, somewhat cult heroes, I think, in 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 some respect. Kurt Rangy Chase, of course, went over to England and won a Man of Steel award and always had a lot of time for Michael Lett as well. He scored a try in this game uh, playing on the wing. It was uh, one of those guys that was a very good reserve grader and could never quite make that next step up to uh, become a, a regular first grader. But uh, he was a bloke that uh, I always enjoyed watching in the lower grades and it was... Uh, I, was always happy whenever he got an opportunity to to play in the, in the top grade. Of course, uh, went on and played at uh, at Canterbury after us uh, as, as well. So he was around, played a couple of games during the the 2010 season. So uh, some good names there, Jesse, and uh, a nice little trip down memory lane. But um, yeah, that's uh, Jags Dragons tri trivia for uh, for this team list Tuesday. And I'll stay with you, Jesse. Uh, we have had a question from, from Ian Johnson uh, also with re regard to Bud Sullivan. He wants to know if we think it would be a good idea for us to loan Bud to the Dolphins. Uh, they have no halves at the moment. We aren't using him. Uh, it would give him some, some game time and also some, uh, some, some time under an experienced coach like Wayne Bennett. Uh, it seemed to work wonders for a guy like Harry Grant. So is this something that the Dragons should consider? Um. Yeah, I'd look at it. Um, as, as Wayne Bennett said at the press conference the other night, I don't know if you guys watched it, but um, Cody Nicarim is the, um, probably the last half they've got um, in depth-wise. So, um, yeah, um, what I was going to say is maybe you could give him some experience, like, yeah, learning under the master coach, Wayne Bennett. Um, yes, um, I do like what he's, the question is. Um, but, yeah. It's it's a bit of a tough one. Like yes, it'll be good for his development to learn under Wayne Bennett and um, gain some first grade experience. Because I think he's too good to be playing New South Wales Cup. Um, yeah, it, Wayne Bennett will tell him what's right and what what how he can become a regular first grader. It'll be great for him to to learn under Wayne Bennett. Um, we've also had some great examples of loan players like David Orfaluma uh, was on the outer at the Tigers last year. Melbourne took him on the loan deal because they were down um, plenty of backs last year. 
Um, Jesse Arthurs is another good example. He was on loan to the Warriors last year. Um, he's gone back to the Broncos since. He's been a um, been filling in for Corey Oates lately. So I'm not. I don't say I wouldn't say I'm not a fan of it. Um, um, but yeah, they'd have to apply, obviously. But yeah, I think it would be beneficial for him, and it will be beneficial for us when he does come back to the club. But then again, um, the Dolphins would have to apply for us, and um, yeah, it would be good. But yeah, see, um, have to happen first. Obviously. Yeah, I, I look reading through the comments, Mike. You um, you might be on your own there. Rory McDonald says no way. Uh, Murray Bradley, I don't know who that bloke is, but uh, he says no, 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 no. Uh, and then we've got uh, Stephen Bates says no. Uh, the storm had Cam and Cheese. We have only Hunt. Uh, Darren, Darren Clifty says, no, loan the Dolphins, Mumbai. Um, <laughs> Lisa Marie Cooper says, what happens if Hunt gets injured? Uh, and uh, I, I think that the Hasman said, how can I put this politely? Hell no. Um, the only support you've got, Tolly Angelita says, yeah, I reckon he will learn a lot from Wayne Bennett in a week. Um, so uh, that's about the only, only support you've got there for that one, Jess. But my well, my worry there if we lend him to the Dolphins, like he might want to stay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah no, like how can you do it? I think North will well, uh, stay uh, in uh, Melbourne. Well, he's contracted I, 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 through I, I, the I end of twenty twenty five for a start. Yeah. Well, you can still loan a player. Like that's yeah, that's, that's right. We're not we're talking about doing it for the the rest of this season and then bringing him back uh, next year with. Uh, you know, a few more first grade games under his belt, but uh, Jesse, you've got something to add. I mean, if we did get to that stage where we lost, say, Junior or or Mbai or Hunt, we can always ask for it back. I mean, a couple of years ago, we had um, Jermaine Chanel Brown on loan to us from the Warriors, and I think he was on loan for about three, two or three games for us. Um, the Warriors got hit by injuries, and they asked for it back which he's contracted to their club. So at the end of the day, if, if he does, if we do get struck by injury and he is at the Dolphins, we have the right to ask for him back. Yeah. Muzz has chimed in again. Uh, I, I don't know why he's not on the show tonight, but uh, he, he says, fuck the Dolphins. They've got a whole Q Cup cop to choose from. Uh, so uh, we're, not, we're, we're not, not fans of helping out the Dolphins uh, here on the Mad Dragons podcast. Uh, <laughs> but um yeah we want bud to stay here thank you so <laughs> sorry jess i love bud so i think we need him to stay right at the dragons i know what you mean it would be amazing to see what he would do with under bennett i think everyone does but as about no he needs to stay with us yeah i, I, I don't i don't think we've got the depth to be uh to be loaning players out particularly key position players where we have no depth at all. So I, I I think there's other clubs in a better position than us to be able to to maybe loan some some young players. I don't think we've got uh, the depth to be considering at, the, at this stage. So I think that's a, a resounding no uh, there, Ian, to, to your question uh, from everybody but, uh, but Jesse and maybe slightly Tolly, but uh, everyone else is opposed. Um, staying on, on Bud Sullivan, Rob Saguna. He's not a fan of uh, the team selection at all this week. Uh, he said that Umbai is an obvious favourite of an out-of-touch coach and Junior has been ordinary since returning from the no-fault stand-down and will be exposed by better teams than the Dolphins. He said the decision by Hook is disgraceful and he should be sacked sooner rather than later. Big T, would you share that strong opinion or are you a little bit more measured? A little bit more what, sorry? Measured, mate, measured. Measured, measured, all right. So um, if Bud Sullivan is injured, is injured um, it's a good decision. But um, if he's not injured and he got dropped on form, that's, um, I don't know what what he's talking about. The, the uh, hook, he, he does my head in that bloke. Um does he selects the players like, like, like boom, oh, same as what um, McGregor did when he kept selecting the, the out of form players. I just don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I, I, 
I'm a, I mean, I, I, I tend to agree. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a pretty big uh, Bud Sullivan fan. I, I think that Bud is a, is a better player than, than Junior Amone. I, I, I just think that he's, he's, he's got more class. I think he's got a, a better kicking game. I think he can control the pace of the game better. But, you know, I, I've, I've also always said that I feel like Junior Amone compliment, complements Ben Hunt better. You know, we, we look at Ben Hunt's career at the Dragons and for the most part, he struggled next to next to Gareth Whittop. He str- struggled when he was next to uh, Corey Norman. He's he's now struggled in the, the couple of games he's had with Jaden Sullivan. The only time Ben Hunt has looked comfortable is when he's when he's been partnered with, with Junior Amone. Now, I don't know why that is, but uh, he, Ben Hunt certainly had his best game of the year last week and he, he seemed comfortable having having junior beside him so uh you know I, I, again i don't think bud deserved to be dropped i don't think he's done anything wrong i think he, no, he, I don't think he's right. actually out, outplayed ben hunt uh in the first few few weeks but uh but here we are um but as you were saying amone compliments hunt um and when amone played with sullivan in the lower grades they complimented each other back then too so it, it's just a matter of weight wait and see game with us with Demone and Sullivan. Yeah. R- Rory McDonald pointing out that uh, he thinks Bud got dropped for that early kick against the, the Broncos early in the set and uh, put that kick through that didn't quite pay off. And he thinks that one play, uh, which was a, a low percentage play at an important stage of the game, uh, Hook doesn't like those kinds of kinds of plays. He doesn't like you playing what's in front of you. He doesn't like you playing instinctive football. He wants you to stick to the game plan, take the tackle, and then do five hit ups for a bomb. That's what Hook wants you to do. Like he yeah, doesn't but... want you to. He don't, don't play football if Hook is your coach. Don't do it. Don't even try. No. Don't even think. No. Don't think. Why would you want to think as a footballer? Yeah, like, and don't, uh, how, are you supposed, how are you supposed to create champions if they don't try to do something special? Like, like if he didn't try it, it's not going to happen. If he tries it and it comes off, he's an absolute champion. So it's one of the six games and all times and historically not a happy hunting ground for us. Um, I think after these games, we'll probably know sort of where we're at um, as a team um, and how effective Hook uh, and his coaching methods are. So uh, I reckon we'll see after that. If we wait any longer before uh, a potential coaching change, I think I could uh, potentially derail the season. So I'd only give him, uh, I think it'll only be about five or six more games before they uh, work out what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Personally, I, I've been saying uh, basically since uh, the end of last season uh, that the, a decision needs to be made by round 10. I, I don't agree that there'll be some people that say that we should wait until the end of the season for me, that is far too late. The, the sooner we make a decision, the easier it is to start planning for 2024, even if that is to, to stay with Hook. If the decision is to stay with Hook, that needs to be made sooner rather than later. If we wait beyond that, then the, the, the coach that we might want to want to then hire will then be gone. And, you know, the players that want to sign with the club, they want to know who the coach is going to be. I think by round 10, as you say, we, we would have seen enough of the Dragons to determine if there's been improvement. And if the improvement isn't noticeable by then, I think it's time to move on to the next coach. Uh, Big T, were you throwing your hand up there to add something to that? No, the, the last part of your question was the um, question I had the um, about making being the coach and uh, making his decision. Um, whether, if he wins the next five games out of five, what happens then? So I think we re-sign him. All right. I, I, A lot I, of people I think... say, no, get rid of him now, but... Um, no, yeah. I, I think I, I think I, I was saying get rid of him now straight away after that that sharks performance. I didn't think that was uh, that was good enough. So I, no, I was yeah. certainly of uh, of the opinion that he that he shouldn't have been the coach for the Dolphins game. And just because we beat the Dolphins, I don't think that changes too much uh, in uh, in Hooks Hooks uh, chances of remaining the coach. But uh, if we do win the next five, then I think that changes things completely. We can win on Anzac Day and. And yeah. in those other key games that that Hasman spoke about, then then I think, you know, we, we've got to got to look to give him another year. Uh, yeah. Jesse, Someone's... you've got got your hand up. But had something to add? So our next five games, we've got the Titans up on the Gold Coast. We've got 
Well, we're going to go through the Canberra. next five games in a, in a minute. That's one of the, one okay. of the next questions. So okay, we'll, we'll go through them in, in in a minute. But Hasman, you had something to add? Uh, yeah. Look, if we if we do win, you know, our next you know five games or six games, I mean, that'll basically show that you know something that Hook's doing is uh, is working. In which case, so uh, as much as I'm not a great fan of Hook as a coach, I'd I'd be perfectly happy for him to to resign if if he can get us. You know, to uh, to win those next five or six games and give us some real uh, momentum to sort of make a finals run. So, if we win next five or six games, something is obviously doing something right and deserves to be resigned. But you've got to remember, history if, if, if history repeats, that happened with Stephen Price. We signed him after a, a good run, and then we went downhill. So you've got to be careful in situations like that, like. Yeah, but what, what's like, what's the alternative, Big T? You 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 oh, wait, you wait, you wait, and you wait, then someone then oh. someone's gone. You've you know, got to make I, a call. I was saying uh, last week, or well, last year that he's got to around ten. Um, but if nothing's changed by then, he's got to be um, he's got to be flicked. Did, uh, I, I might I don't know who to go go back to with this one. That isn't actually on the agenda, but uh, I might go to you, you Jesse, because you were uh, oh actually Chloe, you've got your hand up, but I might. Might go to you. Does the the softness of the, our draw uh, play any part in in this? Like that, the fact that we've got a fair few easy easier games on paper uh, heading up to, to towards round ten. Does that change how long you wait? Do you maybe wait until round fifteen? Because those five games after round ten, none of them look winnable. They all look very tough games. So do you do you maybe wait another five weeks, or do you make that decision by round ten, like we've said? Chloe, you no, you're on mute. Sorry, I thought you were talking to Jesse. Sorry, I was just sorry. Um, I just saw I'm you gonna... had your hand up, so I thought I'd go yeah, to you instead. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, sorry, miscommunication there, guys. Um, um, yeah, you know the Dragons play hot and cold. They'll play good one week, great. Then the next week, it's like a roller coaster. And I feel with Hook, you know, it's just the same. It's just the same with him. It's slow. Like when they're free and they're do, running the ball to the line, I see they're trying to do the magic. They're trying to do stuff. But, yeah, with our draw, I I don't know what is going on with whoever wants to re-sign him, but I don't rate him. We haven't made the top eight. We haven't made the finals in a long time. And I think a lot of us fans are getting sick and tired of not seeing us up there. And it should go back to the coach and it should go back. I know they're players on that field as well, but it's whatever happens. It's like at second half of the Sharks game. They all came out and they were ready to go for oranges. If I was getting paid, what, 30 say $3 million. I just say that, not really. But I should be working my butt off every half to make sure that I'm working that much. But they all look like they were or- ready to go for oranges, you know. There was no passion. There's no speed. There's nothing. And then last week, it was a whole turnaround. And I'm like, we just, I just don't even know what to do anymore with this these teams. Love that we won and it was a whole different atmosphere. But, you know. I think Hook either needs to go. I wanted him to go probably last year because of the way we were. But yeah. again, we have to you wait. So yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's I, my... I, again, again, for, for, for me, we improved last year from from Hook's first year, where yeah. what we had, had eight eight wins in his first year. In his second year, we had twelve wins. But that's yeah. while we only moved up one spot on the ladder to go from eight wins to twelve like that. That's a significant improvement. Yeah. So. I, I think he he deserved an opportunity this year to show further improvement, but we have to show further improvement if yeah. we get to you know the midway point of the season and we're down you know down the bottom half of the ladder, uh, then then it's time to go. But he he has to show that the team is continuing to improve. Yeah, and that's uh, right. we, only, we only missed the eight by a couple of wins last year, and the wins we did have that would have made it. We, we would have made it into the eight. Any other year? Well, yeah, it was definitely it was, there was definitely an unusual year in, in terms of twelve wins not being enough to make the eight. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Jesse, you've got, you, you've got something else to add there, mate? Yeah, so yeah, as you said, like 12 wins, yeah. In previous years, that usually gets you the finals football. Um, but yeah. Um, there was a couple of close games. And even if he does start, it's a fun, it's a fun stat. Um, it's a stat that um, if the referees were that way, they'd find they'd find a um, a reason to sack them, you know. But no, the referees they're fairly fair. Um, Gary Sutton last week was pretty good to us, so right up. Some bunnies. Fair enough, uh, Hasman. What's your tip? They would have liked to have uh, nabbed, but um, yeah, the good good shout there, Big T. All right, um, Cowboys Dolphins, the the Friday game. Well, how do, how do you see this one going? Uh, I'll go to you. So Ruben Cotter's back as well. 